This is a short video demonstrating a couple of different GPS applications that are common on mobile devices. For this video, I'll be demonstrating a GPS utility that allows you to look at the satellite constellation called GPS Plan. And I'll also be looking at a GPS application that allows you to collect lines in the form of GPS tracks and points in the form of waypoints that can be viewed on your map as well as exported and viewed in other mapping programs as well as can be converted to a format that is compatible with Esri software that we commonly use in our classes at AB Tech. So the first thing I'll get, do is go here to my GPS plan app and you'll see as it comes up, it shows you the day and the hour, the, uh, the, the time format, as well as the, uh, the coordinate information in, in uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds, latitude and longitude. In the upper right, I'm going to click the little gear icon to look at some of the settings here to discuss some other parts about the app. So the first thing, and really one of the most important things I wanted to show you in here was the elevation mask. The elevation mask is 15 degrees. That's 15 degrees from the horizon of the, the sky and the land. So if you look out at where the, uh, the, the earth and the sky meet out straight in front of you and you start scanning up about 15 degrees, that's 15 degrees. Okay, the elevation mask is set so that satellites that are below the elevation mask are not used. Uh, satellites that are below 15 degrees, sometimes you'll see a 30 degree elevation mask used as well, uh, are farther away than ones directly overhead. Therefore, the GPS signals travel through more of the atmosphere to get to you, and that introduces uh, more error in the GPS signals. So those are some settings there. We'll press the back button and then click done and we'll see our sky plot. So the sky plot, you are in the very center of the blue circle. And looking up, you'll see satellites 28, 21, and 30 are most directly overhead for me. The blue satellites are GPS satellites. There are seven of them visible within the, the sky above me and the 30 degree uh, elevation mask. The, the green GPS are for the United States Global Positioning 7, S Global Positioning System. The orange satellites are from the GLONASS system, which is the Russian system. The yellow are from Galileo, which is a system not fully functional yet for the European Union. And the, uh, the red ones are a system that, uh, as far as I remember, it's a Japanese system that only has four functioning satellites, and they were put up to, to uh, make our system work better near them. GPS and GNSS, GPS is the Global Positioning System, which is a subset of, the, uh, of a Global Navigation Satellite System, or a GNSS. GNSS is a kind of overreaching um, an overreaching term that means any system that has global navigation satellite coverage. So the United States GPS system is a GNSS. The Russian GLONASS system is a GNSS. So um, these apps allow you to see the current uh, satellite constellation coverage above head as well as you can pull this little slider back and forth and see where they are throughout the day. Now, you'll also notice right above the slider, PDOP, HDOP, VDOP, and TDOP. These are all different types of dilution of precision. The first one, PDOP, stands for positional dilution of precision. And you can use these figures to better understand the accuracy of the GPS data that you'll be getting at any time. The PDOP, for instance, the positional dilution of precision, is a measurement of the geometry of the satellites in the sky. So, 
when you are collecting GPS data, we currently have seven GPS satellites in the American system and seven in the GLONASS system. Depending on your GPS unit, either your GPS unit gets, uh, gets information just from the United States system, the GPS, or it may be a GNSS receiver that tracks satellites from GPS and GLONASS. So the key is that you have good geometry of the satellites in the sky from which you're getting GPS signals. What that means is your, the accuracy of your positional fix from the GPS will be better if the GPS signals you're receiving from the satellites come from satellites that are distributed throughout different portions of the sky. If you're getting a GPS signal from five satellites, but they're all in one quadrant of the sky, your positional dilution of precision will not be as good as if satellites are, are spread throughout all, uh, all um, quadrants of the sky. So uh, these apps allow you to uh, get a feel for where the satellites are, how many satellites are up there, what, which satellites from which system, where they'll be throughout the day, as well um, and uh, and they're a nice a nice way to, to better understand the satellites in the sky now the GPS GNSS satellites have a very high orbit so that they have a nice smooth orbit they don't get interfered with by our atmosphere or anything like that you do need a clear view of the sky GPS does not work indoors well at all if you get up against buildings the accuracy uh, degrades significantly because the GPS signals will bounce off the building before they get to the uh, before they get to the GPS receiver in your phone. Also, under tree cover, the GPS signal bounces around as it hits trees. Uh, so all of these introduce some error into the system, as well as just the GPS signal traveling through the atmosphere also introduces some error. We'll see more about error with our in our GPS uh, lecture PowerPoint uh, on, on the class. So I'm gonna get out of this app and I'm gonna give a quick look over here at Gaia GPS. So here's Gaia GPS and I'm going to uh, go down here to my save tracks and I'm gonna get rid of the one that I did earlier. I'm gonna delete it. So there it is and I'm gonna delete the waypoints with it. And I'll also delete this one, delete, delete, tracks and waypoints. All right, so that is for my sole saved folder icon down at the bottom of the app. Now you can't see everywhere that I click on here, so I'll do my best to describe where I'm clicking. On the bottom, across the bottom, there's map, trip, discover, saved, and settings. I'm going to click on map to go back to my map and it is still showing that map i'm not sure why why is that still there i'm going to close the app and see if that is doing oops not that one saved trip okay so I don't know why it's still showing that other one. I was able to delete them all earlier, but let's not worry about that for right now. And let's just move on and I will uh, create another one so you can just see it happen in real time. So across the top, we have a, uh, a magnifying glass. That's a search button. The, uh, the next arrow is going out in all directions. That makes your map full screen. You can pan your map around and if I click the middle, the middle top button, it's almost like crosshairs. It centers me on the, the map. It centers the map on me. You can see my elevation there. The far right button allows you to change your, uh, your, change your overlays from your own overlays you've created to the base maps you have. You can even add map layers. So let's say you had a trail that was, came in a file that Gaia GPS understood that you got off the internet for a hike you wanted to go on. 
you can download it and add it right here through the add map layers. So that takes us to the file formats of these uh, common GPS apps for phones. The file formats that you will see are not the file formats we've been learning about in the Esri world with uh, shape files and geodatabase feature classes. With these GPS apps, the common file formats you'll see are gpx, .gpx files for GPS exchange and KML or KMZ for keyhole markup language. But, uh, keyhole markup language is the uh, Google Earth format. Both of these are really common file formats that you'll see with, with these types of apps. Now, you can't use the satellite with labels without purchasing this app, so you won't be able to use it. Um, or the, uh, the USGS Topo, so we're kind of stuck with the Gaia Topo, which is fine for demo purposes. And uh, let's... Uh, let's... Look at a couple other settings here. And from our map here, um, I'm going to click that record button that you can see. I'll click record and it starts recording. And I've already recorded a track here where I'm walking. So it's recording another one and you see it putting it on. And what I want to explain to you about tracks is they record a record a vertex in this line every so often and in most apps i haven't looked in gaia but we will see it in the collector app you can change how often it puts in a vertex the vertices for tracks are either put in based on time or distance you can have it put in a vertex every 10 feet or every one foot or every 100 feet or you can have it put in a vertex every second or every 10 seconds. What you want to be is, is cognizant of how the vertices are being put in. For instance, I'm walking around kind of a, a, a small curve in a road in a little cul-de-sac I live in. And if it's only putting in a vertex every, say, 30 seconds, I'd want to walk it really slow to make sure a vertex, several of them got put in as I walked around the curve. Or if, I, if a vertex got put in when I started the curve and I walked around the curve in, in less than the 30 seconds, it would, it would not capture vertices along the curve. So I've walked real slow here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click the picture icon in the upper left and show you how these apps will, many will, uh, allow you to take a picture and... save it as a waypoint on your on your uh, track i'm also going to walk keep walking right around and i think i'll go back out into the middle of the cul-de-sac over here and i'm going to uh or maybe i'll just take a waypoint here um so now i'm going to click the add button instead of taking a picture for the waypoint i'll click the add button and i'll just add a waypoint Okay. Now you can add a waypoint or one your location. If if you've zoomed away from it, it'll it'll put one in the center of the map, and you can put it at your location. I'm going to click the little crosshair to put me at the center of the map, and then if I click the add, it should put the both of these two top ones should put them at the same place since I'm since I am zoomed to the center of the map, and and uh, I haven't panned away from it. So I'll save that one. I could give it a name. Demo. And save it. Okay. So from there, I wanted to look at the settings one more time. Accounts, units, appearance, map controls. You can, you can change a bunch of stuff in here. I encourage you to, to look at it. Um, and I wanted to, so there is mine from earlier. No, that's this one actually right now that I'm working with. And you see, I'm recording elevation, ascent, current speed. I'm not moving. And 
within here you can get to the accuracy of what your your uh, trip is as well what the accuracy of your GPS is you can see here in my trip area that I clicked at the bottom I've got um, the distance uh, the time the speed profile and the elevation profile as well and from here on the top right you see the little circle with the little two curved lines under if i click it that's where you can see my current position in lat long it's showing it in decimal degrees here and here's where it also shows my accuracy plus or minus 16 feet so we'll talk more about accuracies on a mobile phone 16 feet average that's pretty good i mean you're not going to get a lot better than that you might see as good as 10 or 12 feet but 16s uh what about what you expect to see all right so um, i'm going to go back to my map and i'm going to click on the the numbers tick the uh, time ticking away to save this one and i'm going to finish the track and i'm going to save it to class demo all right, for 2020. Okay, so that's a, a little demonstration on working with uh, working with uh, Gaia GPS. It's pretty similar to many uh, GPS apps you can download. This is a free one, um, and it allows you to record tracks and waypoints. It also allows us to export them and. We'll see an export as well right here real quick. So there it is.